Good morning. Uh, as always, it is a joy and a blessing to be in worship with you, whether you're in person or joining us online. It is so good to have you with us today. Uh, just a few brief announcements. Be sure to stick around and join us for a little bit of a hospitality hour after worship. Um, we've got some goodies uh, we'll be right out on the lawn here. If you would like to host a hospitality hour this summer, Miss Denise, our assistant minister today, would be happy to coordinate dates with you for that. You're welcome to stay for 30 seconds, 30 minutes, whatever works in your schedule. Also this week, we have our campfire worship where we, where we will be out on the lawn, uh, gathering around a fire for a brief informal worship service. And then as one does, when one has a campfire, we will have s'mores. Um, so all are welcome to join us for that. We start at seven o'clock on Thursday. And then believe it or not, Sunday begins Vacation Bible School. Um, so please hold all of the kids and volunteers in your prayers this week as everyone finishes getting ready. Um, or starts getting ready uh, for a fun and busy week. If you would like to still register a child in your life, or if you would still like to volunteer, we can always find spaces. Um, so let me know if you're interested in either of those, but hold everyone in prayer as we prepare for that. Any other announcements for the good of the order? There's a whole lot going on. Feel free to read your bulletin. The newsletter just came out. Check that out. Um, as a point of organization, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, on July 21st, the Sunday after Vacation Bible School, we will be joining worship. We will be having a joint worship service with ourselves, Mars United Presbyterian, and Valencia Presbyterian Church, the three churches working together for VBS. And we will have a worship at Adams Township Park, um, to celebrate VBS together. Uh, and if you would like to bring a side dish or a dessert, the more the merrier. Um, so feel free to bring those with you. And I encourage you to maybe bring a chair if you can, because we're expecting a number of people. The following week, July 28th, we have our own church picnic at Adams Township Park, um, where we will have worship outside, and then afterwards we will have a picnic. That one, we, there's a sign-up sheet. Um, there was a flyer by the bulletins. Six dollars per person covers all the food um, that we need. And I hate to say it, but um, part of our picnic is, I am trying to be very gracious and humble about this, uh, but it makes me uncomfortable. Um, we are going to be celebrating a wedding shower on my behalf as I get ready to get married in the fall. Um, so I, I am humbled and honored that you would celebrate that as, your, as this community. Um, but that is also on the 28th. Anything else? Before I dive out of the spotlight here. Yeah. <laughs> Next Sunday on the 14th is 9 a.m. here. July 21st at the park is 10 a.m. Um, I thought I... Yeah, it, it is in there. It's on, it's on the bottom sheet there. So 10 a.m. for the 21st, because those Presbyterians sleep in. So we're going to be worshiping at their time. Um, and on the 28th, we'll be back to our regular time at 9 a.m. With that, um, so we are now in a, the third quarter of the year, surprisingly, which means we have a new mission emphasis project. In this quarter, we our mission emphasis dollars will be going to support the Adams Area Fire Department. Um, and so to help us know what we're doing when we are supporting the Adams Area Fire Department, we have our very own Gary McCormick to tell us a little bit about the work they do. Gary. Good morning. So I'm here on representing the Adams Area Fire Department, and I'd like to thank everyone for their contribution to what St. John's does for us. Uh, your contributions go a long way. With your contribution, it buys all our equipment, helps with equipment, and the cost is getting greatly expensive for us. So we appreciate everything that you people do for us. And um, a couple examples for you. Uh, your money goes in towards buying equipment for protecting the firefighters. And a good example of why we need the money is 
the uh, a helmet, a coat, bunker pants, boots, and a pair of gloves cost us right around $4,000 for each firefighter now. Uh, years ago, back when I started in the 60s, you could have three or $400 took care of it, so that's where all our expenses go. Um, and so everything we buy, your money goes towards uh, a, a, new, a new engine. We just ordered one two years ago, $758,000. That engine today is almost a million dollars. So they just keep increasing. So everything you give us, we really appreciate. And the other thing is, I know we've sent out a couple of bulletins on the Facebook, and people have been bringing us water, bottled water. We go through a lot of bottled water in the summertime. If we get a major fire, we could go through six, seven cases, eight cases of water. And so it's greatly appreciated for if there's anyone here who has dropped off water at the station for us, it's very greatly. And if anybody has any questions, I could answer a few questions if somebody would like, or after church service, I'll be here for a little bit if somebody would like to have some questions answered. Anybody have anything? Uh, you can, there's usually somebody around, but if you just drop it off, you drop it off at one of the doors, back door, front door, and somebody will see it and pick it up. One thing I would like to mention with the people here, and you can be talking to your neighbors and whatnot, if you are going to have a controlled burn and burn and brush or whatever, anything, please contact the 911 center and let them know you are burning brush and for what time. We are getting so many calls um, and we get there and they say, what are you here for? Well, you got a brush fire going. Well, yeah, I'm burning off some brush or whatever Someone you go and buy with their cell phone, oh, there's a fire, boom, 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 and they call us. So please contact the control center and say, hey, I'm going to have a control burn from such and such a time, and it will be out by such and such a time. And it saves us a lot of runs that we don't have to be out on. Any other questions? Right. Right. I don't know if you may be read it in the paper and so forth, but you feel that you're safe everywhere. But just here a couple of weeks ago, we had an early morning fire, and it was over at the Crossroads Church over in Balls Bend there. Uh, the air conditioners overheated and overworked and started the back of the church on fire. And luckily, there was a bystander going by who used to be a firefighter in Cranberry. He seen it. He called him right away. We got there and we did uh, a good job and saved their church for them. Uh, so that was an effort among about five other fire departments besides Adams. It was a middle sex call, but we do mutual aid with everybody. Uh, that's things to think about even here in your church, watching if you have air conditioners and so forth and everything. Smoke alarms, I don't know if there's any here, if you have any alarm systems or not, but they didn't have anything. They could have, if that bystander wouldn't have seen it, they could have lost their whole church that day. So it's something that everyone should think about, even in their own homes. You never know when something's going to happen. Thank you. So if you would like to support the mission emphasis during this quarter of July, August, September, um, you can make a note on your envelope that it is for the mission emphasis and it will get directed 100% that way. Um, so with that then, let us take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds for worship. I invite you to please stand as you're able for our gathering song.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails and whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. In God's goodness, we are free to claim the gift of God's mercy. We are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Ezekiel. A voice said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending to you the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I'm sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that where there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord.
A reading from 2 Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weakness. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. According to Mark, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went out among, among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated and would our younger worshipers come on up. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are we doing today? A little sleepy? We seem very chill. So, good morning. <laughs> so, has anyone ever gone on a trip? Anywhere? Yes. Sometimes we, maybe, maybe just for like the day, or maybe for like a long time. Has anyone ever gone somewhere where they've never been before? Yes, because if anytime you've gone somewhere, at some point it was your first time going there, right? Now, what did you pack with you? 
What kinds of things did you pack? Clothes, excellent choice. Clo change of clothes is always good. What other kinds of things do we pack when we go places? Does anyone pack snacks? Or maybe mom and dad pack the snacks. But you have snacks with you, right? Does anyone bring entertainment for the drive? Uh-huh. Um, what about if you don't know where you're going, you don't know if there's going to be bedding there, maybe you take a sleeping bag or sheets and pillows and things like that. Um, anyone ever bring like sunscreen places? I remember, so when I was, was a camper and I went to camp, about two weeks beforehand, they sent me this list of everything to bring. And it was clothes, it was bathing suits, and towels, and sleeping bags, and bug spray, and sunscreen. And they told us not to bring snacks, but some people did. Um, and so there's this long list of things. Now Jesus, in today's story, Jesus was sending out his disciples, his followers, to go to places they had never been before. And what did Jesus tell them to take with them? Nothing. A staff to help walk with. And wear shoes. They, he told them to wear shoes. And uh, that's about it. So if you were to go on a journey and you have no idea where you're going, you don't know who you're going to see, and all you have are the shoes on your feet and the clothes on your back, how are you going to make sure that you have snacks? Where are you going to get the snacks from? Thank you. I don't actually want some, but I was just using those. Where are you going to get those snacks from? She gave me a great example right there. Where are you going to get snacks from? If you have no snacks and you go somewhere where there are people and you need snacks, where do you get your snacks from? People, right? Other people, like Samantha just did, will offer, or, or Jesus is saying, will offer you the snacks that you need. People will offer you a place to sleep. People will offer you the food you need. People will take care of you. And so while I still encourage you, if you're going to go on a trip, go ahead and pack the extra clothes, pack the snacks, pack all those good things. But remember that when you go out to places, Jesus is with you. And what Jesus is saying is that no matter where you go, God will take care of you. You'll be okay. So as you go places and as you travel, remember as you're packing your bag that you're also packing Jesus to come with you. You're also packing that God's love will be with you, God's mercy will be with you, God's courage and strength and all those good things will be with you wherever you go. So even if it feels like you might not have what you need, you've got God in your corner. Can you remember that God is always with you? Excellent. Can you remember that sharing snacks is a good thing and is a good way to show that God's love is with other people? Excellent. Let's say a prayer. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for all the ways that you show up and care for us through other people. We give you thanks for the ways that people share with us and offer your love to us. And we pray that you help us to remember to share what we have with other people and show your love to them. In your most precious name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can head on back. Thank you for the offering of snacks. I do appreciate it. You're going to hang out up here with me? Cool. Would you please pray with me? Good and gracious God, we pray that you breathe your spirit into and among us so that we don't just hear words with our ears, but hear in our hearts the message you have for us this day. Amen. So I have a question for you. In today's gospel, did Jesus fail? Now, when I ask that question, I can almost hear the gut reactions of no, because Jesus does not fail. And it's a nice little circular logic. Jesus did not fail because Jesus does not fail. But Jesus went back to Nazareth. He went back to his hometown. And he preached and he taught. And from what we have, not a single person followed Jesus because of this. Not a single person confessed him Lord. Not a single person fell down on their face and said, Look, my Lord, my God. None of that happened. And not only that, but it goes on to say that Jesus did not do any deeds of power in Nazareth. So Jesus, who was going around proclaiming God's good news, who was doing deeds of power, 
remember the, the raising the daughter from the dead, the healing of the paralyzed man, the healing of the shriveled hand, the calming of the storms. After Jesus had been doing that, he got to his hometown and did none of that. And not only did he not get any more followers by going to Nazareth, but they were offended by him. They were scandalized by him. They looked at him and said, that's Mary's boy. We know him. He, he is a day laborer. He is just like, what is, who does he think he is? So did Jesus fail when he went to Nazareth? Depends on how we measure success and failure. When we think about ministry and we think about successful ministry, the very first thing that comes to mind, I'm going to guess for most people, is big numbers. Hordes of people coming down and saying, Jesus, my Lord and my God. Hordes of money pouring into the offering plate. Big numbers. And we think that is successful ministry. And that is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. But is that what ministry is about? Getting more butts in the pews. If that's what ministry is about, then yes, Jesus failed when he went to Nazareth because there were no new followers, there were no new people recognizing him as God, and there were no deeds of power, except for a few little simple cures. So if we measure success of ministry by numbers, yes, Jesus failed. But what if, what if it's not about the numbers? What if the call of ministry is about proclaiming God's love, is about telling the story of Jesus, is about letting people know about God's grace and God's mercy and God's forgiveness and letting them know that they are welcome into this story? If proclaiming that good news, that gospel, is what ministry is all about, then Jesus was wildly successful in Nazareth because that is exactly what he did. He went into the synagogue and he taught and he preached and he welcomed people into the story of God's good news, of God's redeeming grace. Not everyone was ready to hear it, but he proclaimed it. And then he sent his disciples. After they witnessed him getting rejected, he turned to his disciples and said, your turn. And he sent them out two by two into the neighboring villages to do exactly what he did, to proclaim the good news, to be a cold drink of water for the thirsty, to feed the hungry, to heal the hurting, to restore community to the lonely. He sent them out to do that, not to get a quota Jesus did not say, go out and find a hundred more followers. Jesus said, go out and proclaim the good, good news. And that's what we're called to do too. Ministry, successful ministry, it feels good to get the numbers. Don't get me wrong. That's always lovely. But good ministry is about telling God's story about witnessing to what God is doing in this world, to seeing creation flourish around us and say, isn't God marvelous? To see a small child offering snacks and saying, look at how God is offering hospitality in this moment. To see a pantry of goodies that are just free for anyone. To have water dropped off at the fire department as a cool drink of water on a hot day can be our hands doing God's work in this world. That is ministry. It's easy to look at Jesus in Nazareth and say, oh, those people in Nazareth, they just didn't get it. Or, Jesus was hampered by being in his hometown. They limited him. But Jesus still proclaimed the good news. Jesus still invited them into God's story. 
And who knows? Maybe in another year or two, those people who heard that story, who were a little confused at Mary's son telling that story, maybe those people found their way back again. And same thing with the disciples. As they went out, in some towns, they took that sand on their sandals, and they just dusted it off and kept on going. Who knows what happened after that? Because ministry ultimately is also not about and not up to us. Ministry is up to God. We have the hands. God is doing the work. As the disciples were traveling from town to town to town, they were proclaiming God's good news and inviting people to participate in what God was up to. They were speaking the words, but it was God's voice that was being heard. It was God's message of love and grace that was being shared. In Ezekiel, in our first reading, it's a very different context, but I love that last line of whether they hear or not, they will know a prophet has been among them. Whether they hear or not, they will know a prophet has been among them. Whether someone accepts our invitation to come to church, whether someone accepts our offer to pray for them or not, do they know that God has been with them through the love and the care that you offer? Are you being the hands doing God's work in this world? If yes, then the ministry was successful. It doesn't matter if there is any response or any numerical success. If we are proclaiming God's love, God's grace, God's forgiveness, and mercy, if we are being the hands and feet doing God's work, if we are the voices proclaiming God's message, ministry is happening. Good ministry is happening. Jesus got rejected in Nazareth, quite wholly rejected, but that didn't stop him. Instead, he looked at the next encounter and said, let's go there. Let's keep proclaiming, let's keep sharing this good news and let God handle the rest. Did Jesus fail in Nazareth? Depends on how we define success or failure in ministry. By the example Jesus gives us, no, he did not fail. And he did not fail, not just because he's Jesus and Jesus does not fail. He did not fail because he did good ministry. He taught, he preached, he loved. So let us go out into the world and do good ministry to teach, to love, to offer grace in every encounter that we do and let God do the work. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. One in communion of saints and in power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. Glorious God, you bend down to wash the feet of your disciples. Let the servant church arise in our teaching, our praying, our healing, and our doing. Make all your faithful people powerful in weakness and strong in grace. In your mercy. Life-giving God, your fingers trace the heavens and your hands mold the earth. Where there is drought, bring nourishing rain. Where there is devastation from fire or flood, bring relief. Sustain the well-being of every living thing. In your mercy. Merciful God, you speak and the nations listen. Open those who govern to the cries of all who journey with no food or shelter particularly people fleeing violence, those seeking freedom, and those in search of community. In your mercy, gracious God, your embrace brings wholeness to those who are troubled. Anoint Bob, Geneva, Cherry, Winnie, Henry, Harry, Ellen, Ruth, Sally, Katie, Debbie, Anne, those on our prayer list, all whom we remember aloud or in our hearts, and all who suffer in any way with the oil of healing and grant them renewal. In your mercy, welcoming God, in your presence strangers become companions and enemies become neighbors. Open our doors to those we have so easily shut out, particularly people who are different from us, or who are marginalized by church or society. In your mercy. Eternal God, you gather us into your house of many dwelling places. We give you thanks for our faithful departed. Inspire us by their lives of faith until with them we rest forever at our journey's end. In your mercy. Holy God, holy and merciful, you hear our prayers spoken and unspoken. We lift now the prayers that are in the hearts and minds of this congregation this day. Prayers for Jess as she heals in the ICU after being hit by a car as a pedestrian. For Summer recovering from cancer surgery. For Tom with lung problems. We pray you help Sarah's family remember her and to heal. We pray for Kevin that his search for employment is successful as he seeks to care for his family. God, we pray for all who feel insufficient. May they know that in your grace, in your courage, and in your strength, they are more than enough. Into your outstretched arms, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
your precepts. Love by your word. Listen, listen, God is calling through the warring waiting, offering forgiveness. Come for one joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the warring waiting, offering forgiveness. Come for joy. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened it to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Almighty and merciful God, and great is your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. To explain God's love, to show it and to share it, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying this is the is my body given for you take and eat do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me Remembering, therefore, his good command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again. We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, that we and all who share in the body and blood of your Son may be filled with heavenly peace and joy, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be made holy, and have our place with all your saints. All blessing and praise and thanks to you, holy God, through Jesus Christ, by your Spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. 
Come.
and the souls of daily parts have seen upon the inward eye of falling star across the sky on thy way in the heart of thy way in the heart he come to us in some seas the ocean to my foe yet small and still upon the praise of when thy stirred the stops of trees And as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. 
Jesus said, go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.